Welcome to the Nifty Chicks. Super excited for our guests today. We have Meg Wells and Ty Henwood from Catharsis. Welcome to the Nifty Chicks. Happy to have you guys here. Thank you so much. We're excited to be here. <laughs> We're thrilled to be here. Yeah, it's great to see you guys in person. It's, it's always amazing putting faces to the, the Twitter names and stuff. And voices, yeah. 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 <laughs> right? Well, so we did actually meet very briefly at mm -hmm. NFT NYC when I was picking up my lovely catharsis gear, which I don't have with me now because I'm traveling and I didn't want to bring all that with me for, you know, two months on the road. Uh, but I love my my necklaces and um, so I think it's a little bit of an interesting story how I found out about you guys. And it's it's always funny to me when, when I'm in certain industries, how small they are and how, you know, we, we talk a lot about community. And the reason that I heard about you guys is because of the Fame Lady Squad and you guys did a collab with them. And I was listening to From the Blockchain and heard your guys' interview and, you know, went and checked you out and then found out about the collab and that if you bought this NFT, then you could in, in, in exchange redeem it for a piece of jewelry. So tell me, I guess, just tell us a little bit about how that came about. And I know that's just one part of Catharsis and what you guys are doing. And we're going to talk about all those things. Yeah. So Fame Lady Squad was definitely like one of the most incredible collaborations that we've done in the last year of being in the NFT space. Uh, but basically, we came up with this concept um, to kind of, as you mentioned, incorporate the, a physical product um, with a digital asset. Um, so we actually started as a physical accessory brand in 2018. That was the market that we were in, the niche that we had. Um, and we're here in Toronto and COVID basically shut us down. We were in a couple uh, retail locations. We were doing pop-ups all over the city. Um, and obviously nobody wanted to touch anything or anybody when COVID started. Uh, so trying on rings and accessories, just basically no more. So we discovered NFTs, we discovered the whole space, fell in love with it, and um, basically started doing collaborations with projects um, in the space where Ty, who is a lovely artist and graphic designer, 3D animation, taught himself how to use everything, it's incredible, um, would create an NFT artwork that was redeemable for a physical piece that we designed and manufactured in collaboration with, you know, the owners and founders of these different projects. So Fame Lady Squad was the first, the first, one of the first that we collaborated with. And they were honestly, can I say they were our favorite? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> God, I can't say that. You totally, I think you can. I think you can because they're one of my favorites. <laughs> so it, most fun to work with. What they great, are, yeah. Oh, good. They were lovely for every step of the process. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so, that's such an interesting story for you to have taken kind of what seemed like doom and gloom, right? COVID happened, all your stories were not getting obviously the traction you wanted. And you turned it into like something fascinating. And so one of the questions I always ask people, because for Mindy Cell and myself, it's it, it's a complicated story of how we actually got into NFTs, how we got to that point where we understood what an NFT was. Like, talk to us about like, so you're you're in COVID, you've got, you know, your store, it's already working, but now you've got a shift. Like, how did you even come about the idea of NFTs and then be able to like absorb it and understand what an NFT is to then, you know, utilize that for a, another part two business? Yeah. So we, <laughs> COVID was bad. We're here in, uh, we're here in Ontario where they actually uh, didn't just shut stuff. Like they put us in a, in a lockdown for a year, over a year at least where people, you know, retail was closed. You couldn't go out, you couldn't go shopping. Um, and so that put a huge strain on us initially because that was our revenue stream mostly was physical. We were building a gorilla. We don't have, you know, the budget of a giant company yet. We were bootstrapping it. And, uh, 
you know, so it forced us to try and compete online with e-commerce sales. And we, we just couldn't because there's there's no way you can compete with the larger brand selling stuff, you know, with the ad spend. Mm -hmm. So it kind of put us in a, in a. Sorry, guys. Oh, I was trying to hold on. Let's pause one second because I just sure. screwed that up. Um, I wanted I wanted to show the NFT. Um, mm -hmm. Jenna, do you want to ask that question again, just so I can have a clear cut? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want that yeah. the music because because you could hear the music, right? No, oh, couldn't hear the music. No. Uh -uh. Oh, you couldn't. Oh, okay. So it's just the video then. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be it'd be easiest if you just ask the question again and then yeah, sorry. Of course. <laughs> okay. Um, so one of the like the questions that I always ask because Mindy Cell and I have, you know, very complex stories of like how we got to understand NFTs enough to then like dive in. So talk to us about your journey. You've got a business, um, you know, you've got a couple of stores, COVID happened. You obviously had to make a shift. You chose NFTs and Web3 as your shift. But like, talk to us about like how you learned about NFTs, what an NFT is, what the, like your journey into that space, which is such a complicated space. How, what, what was that journey like? Yeah, so here in Ontario, the, the the government actually shut us down for almost a year and a half. We had no access to retail stores. We were basically stuck inside our houses. Um, so all of our kind of revenue streams sort of dried up. We couldn't compete in e-commerce with the ad spends that larger companies could afford. Uh, so it forced us to really take a hard look at how we were building what we were building. Um, and throughout that time, we were kind of, you know, trying to work where we could. We were, you know, trying to make ends meet. And we had slowed down progress on the physical brand. Uh, and one day, I think I think what really kind of turned us on to it is it started making a couple news headlines. Mm -hmm. um, and then all of a sudden, people were making a little bit of money with NFTs. It was sort of a weird fringe thing a couple people were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, and then all of a sudden, people sold a, a picture for $69 million. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there nobody pays $69 million for anything unless there's some vision to it. So it went from like this weird fringe thing to like, we need to know what the heck that is because we might already be way behind. Mm -hmm. And um, learning about it, we actually, what really gave us this idea was Nike mm -hmm. uh, back in 2020, I think that was. No, it might've been 2021. Mm -hmm. But they, they very early, very early on in the crypto space or in the main <laughs> NFT space, they, they filed a, uh, a patent for crypto kicks which, um, you know, I was, I was sitting there and I, I saw this article about it and, and the patent for crypto kicks was a way of essentially storing a digital shoe in their digital locker that could then be turned into a physical shoe uh, through a, a fabrication process. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of like Nike doing it is what really made it click. And that was really kind of under the radar that they did that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, now they own Artifact and everything. So they've been planning this for a while. Mm -hmm. But um, we realized like physical brands are going to be changing over the next five to 10 years. And we wanted to kind of get ahead of that. Uh, so we started planning out how we could turn this physical thing into a digital physical thing. And then, yeah, it was, I would say six months to a year of just learning about NFTs before we really felt confident in, in doing something. Um, and that was our first launch with our Genesis collection, which uh, is actually still available now on OpenSea. We had, uh, we paired, uh, rings, which we actually already manufactured, we paired them one to one with a digital asset, uh, which also has utility as like a, a an entrance key to our future content. So um, that was our first foray, and we got really excited about it. We've been building that for a long time, and we've quit our jobs now, so mm -hmm. it's uh, it's all in. All in, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Love it. So cool. That is awesome. I did. Um, I wanted to pull up uh, the NFT that I got to get my fame lady. Oh, come on. Sorry, my Wi Fi is not great here. <laughs> so you can see yeah. there's my fame lady NFT. And then you get this lovely necklace, which I think you guys know this story, uh, but when I got my necklace and I took it out of the box, it was all tangled up oh. and a mess. And I tried for like an hour to fix it and I could not get it. And I just happened, I was actually trying to find your guys's booth at NFT NYC. 
And I ended up seeing Jenna, Jenna T first. And I was like, oh my gosh, look at my necklace. And she's like, so I have this hidden talent. <laughs> and <laughs> we, we yep. do think, you know, if she ever finds herself unemployed or something, she could <laughs> make a living untangling necklaces she did such a great job so we i, I will put it in the in this video because it is funny to watch i did a you know sped up video of her untangling it it took her like 30 minutes to fix this thing and we've got like 30 seconds of video shot it was, it was like for a time lapse it was long so i mean yeah yeah it was just the way so it's funny because the packaging and obviously the product, like they're beautiful, but you know, we, we brought everything to New York with us and it was, they were packed very lovely in our luggage, yeah. but you know how they are throwing luggage around and on the plane and everything like that. There's just like, there's no, no controlling. Well, how they and end up. Honestly, like, I feel like you guys did the best you could, like even had like the little straw to keep it from. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Okay. It's totally it was, not your fault. Literally the the kickstart to what I'm going to start is another YouTube channel called Untangled with a Twist. Yes. And I'm going to have a martini there and I'm just going to sit on YouTube untangling mm. things. I'm telling you. Oh, that'll, Watch that'll be crazy. It. Yeah. It's going to be huge. People will love that. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> that's so satisfying. Yeah. That like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. It, yeah. it was it was really fun to watch her do it though because I'm like oh my god and she kept she'd get closer and closer and so yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's awesome well, it's a good I, hidden talent I'm, I'm glad I'm glad it worked I know, out right? yeah, it worked out great <laughs> yeah so I want to know more about the wearables and and what you guys have coming up because I know you've got some exciting things on the horizon. Yeah, we definitely, so for wearables, I mean, like we've been talking about the Fame Lady Squad collaboration that we did, we've done four other collaborations with projects in the space where we created custom wearables for the community and did the same kind of concept where we paired them one-to-one -one with an NFT artwork that Ty put the, together. We also, he's so good. It's amazing. Um, so basically like I'm in charge of all of the manufacturing in the back end of the project. And then he deals, so I deal with the web two side and then he deals with like the web three side of everything, which is a good, a good balance for us. Um, so we've done the collaborations. We've created these different wearables. We've done a couple um, almost like wholesale or like white label deals as well because because we came from this space, we understand the the you know the procedure of getting these things manufactured. We have connections. Uh, we've built out like a manufacturing pipeline, so we're able to kind of create this product, um, you know, for anybody basically that is in this space that wants it. Um, and then we actually collaborated with NFT NYC as well, where we created a smartware pendant, um, which was a stainless steel pendant that had a NFC chip in the base of it. So basically any modern smartphone has the capability to read these chips. Um, so we had them linked to a free NFT and then basically these chips were reprogrammable. So you can send them to any website, portfolio, like geolocation, yeah. and basically use this pendant as like a walking business card pretty much. So that's kind of a start of like our smartware line that we're going to be doing. Uh, we want to be incorporating NFC technology into a lot of different products that we offer in the future. Um, we started off with these pendants as like a proof of concept and they were super well received at the conference and they've been selling consistently since, which is amazing. Um, and these were like pretty simplistic, you know, like the NFCs, um, like I said, just literally link to a website. There's no security. There's no like authenticity, authentic. Can I, can I speak? Yeah, it, it's not like a wallet or anything. It's exactly. just it's a yeah, simple, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, pretty simple chip, but it's super versatile, which makes it really exciting. And yeah. We can do so much with it. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we're going to be implementing AR in our upcoming yeah. uh, smartware line as well. So mm -hmm. we're, we're super excited about that. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some cool partnerships for it. And, uh, yeah. uh, and that kind of leads us into our duplicate collection, which is our upcoming big drop we're super excited about. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's super exciting. And so um, do you think you'll ever go back to like retail? 
Uh, yeah, actually, that's a, that's part of our like vision for the brand entirely. So uh, these duplicates that we're that we're kind of speaking about, we're kind of building a Web three business with this avatar collection that we're going to be dropping, and we can get into that in a little bit as well. But we're also like at the si same time building out this Web two presence where everything is getting manufactured as well. And we are going to be selling these pieces, IRL, e-commerce style, um, and kind of keeping them separate, but that they feed into each other. Um, so cool. it'll make a little bit more sense with the with the duplicate yeah. um, pitch, basically. So <laughs> interesting. Will you have a storefront like that, that level of retail storefronts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to have flagship cool. stores in different countries around the world. Yeah. We want to turn them not just into a retail space, but also a co working space, mm -hmm. uh, an event venue, wow. uh, a whole experience yeah. that is actually enhanced cool. by AR as well. Yeah. Um, and there's going to be you're going to be able to use our ecosystem token loyalty l-y-l-t uh it's a erc token uh, and you'll be able to actually spend that within our uh our awesome co-working we, we call them the compounds the catharsis compounds uh but that's that's pretty yeah. alpha we're, we're a little ways that. out from that um really our, our next step is is getting our ecosystem built out on mm -hmm. top of the loyalty token so mm -hmm. uh the duplicate avatars are really cool um i don't know how much you guys have seen about it, but we're happy to chat if, if uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> we got the time. Yeah, definitely. Tell us more. Yeah, so they are our new offering and they're really what we've been kind of building up to with these collabs. Everything we've done is to kind of build out a track record in the space so far, because we do come from retail. We didn't have a ton of crypto experience before. So it was about learning. Uh, it was about building a team and it was about kind of showing like we're not smoke and mirrors because there's a ton of that going on in the NFT space and crypto in general. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we were like, let's do it first. Let's produce real things that people can hold. Let's ship them out. Let's prove that we're actually doing it. Uh, and then we'll drop something with a whole bunch of really cool utility and innovative features and people will know we're actually going to follow through. Uh, so the duplicates, they're, they're uh, 3D high res avatars built out in Unreal Engine. Uh, they are fully rigged, so they're going to be usable across different metaverses and game worlds uh, that we're building partnerships with right now. Uh, we decided we're not going to just build a metaverse. We're actually going to build the best wearable character for all the metaverses. Um, yeah, that, that's him yeah, right there. Exactly. That's our guy. So we're starting off with a kind <laughs> of male it. avatar. Mm -hmm. uh, and what's cool about him is that every single item of clothing that he's wearing or that you see in this, uh, along with many, many more, they mm -hmm. are actually interchangeable NFTs themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the avatar that's an NFT. It's actually each item of clothing, each mask, each wearable. Yeah. Uh, they have 13 categories of NFT traits that you're going to be able to buy, uh, sell and trade in an on browser in browser marketplace we're creating as well as OpenSea and other avenues. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to have different rarity tiers and they're actually going to be earning you passive income based on what your duplicate has on. Uh, so that's through our loyalty token. It's our ecosystem token. You'll be able to spend it on all sorts of really cool stuff, including physicals. Yeah. Uh, and you'll be earning that based on the, the clothing your character has on at any given time. So that's also the like everything that you see that that duplicate was wearing there were actually getting manufactured. Um, wow. We have prototypes in the works right now. Um, there we're going to be able to hold them in our hands within weeks at this point. Uh, so we're really we're building out that retail presence and the e-commerce presence um, as well as this avatar collection in the Web3 project. Yeah. People, uh, people who hold our NFTs are going to actually get kickbacks. And I, I'm going to call it rewards because that's all I can call it. Rewards. But they're going to get rewards yeah. for our Web2 and e-commerce sales. Mm -hmm. And then people who buy stuff through our Web2 channels are going to get you know onboarded into Web3 because we're going to send them uh, loyalty token vouchers and stuff like that. They just got to open a wallet and then yeah. they'll have enough loyalty token to maybe buy something new with it. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're really excited because it kind of, yeah, like she said, it feeds into each other and mm -hmm. we're going to create a really cool right. ecosystem uh, and build brand loyalty through it is, is our real goal. And the really cool part too is that all of the collaborations that we've done with these projects in the space over the last year, um, like we're going to be incorporating those as assets onto these avatars. Um, so basically everybody that owns a Catharsis X Fame Lady pendant, they're going to be able to have that dropped onto their avatar 
And there's going to be perks kind of embedded into these pieces as well. Mm -hmm. So whether, you know, uh, from the blockchain podcast, maybe is hosting like a live recording. Um, maybe if you're wearing your family dependent on the avatar, you're able to go and like watch it live or you get a discount potentially in their upcoming merch store or whatever the case is. But we're really going to be able to like add a lot of value to our previous collaboration to our partners. Um, and we're going to be able to collaborate with so many more people in the future, mm -hmm. too. Um, all of these pieces that we've created in this design right now, they're part of our season one, but we're going to be able to create like new capsule collections basically all the time that are going to be, you know, interchangeable with these avatars at any point. Wow. I mean, that is so amazing. I'm, I have it on my screen as well. I'm like seeing this guy move and all these like <laughs> various elements of clothing and accessories. It's just so cool. I don't know how you Thank guys you. have the, I mean, you guys have such a vision. I have to say like you, most people think, you know, I find that most people think in like a, a two to three year kind of time frame. You guys are thinking like 10, 15, 20 years out. Like this yeah. is, this could change, totally change like the whole fashion industry, I feel like. That's our goal. We want to disrupt it. We we think the fashion industry is stale. Mm -hmm. We think that, you know, right now it's, and the, if you check out our info deck, it's funny. It's That's one of the first things our mission right now mm -hmm. is to redefine the dynamic between brands and their brand loyal consumers. Because uh, it's such a skewed relationship. You know, the brand gets not only your money, yeah. uh, your loyalty, the clout uh, that comes from you, you know, lifting them up in, in everybody's eyes, but also free marketing because you wear their stuff all the time. Yeah. Uh, so we believe in the next five to 10 years that once blockchain and Web3 becomes more widely accessible, uh, people are going to get smarter about what they put on because you're going to be able to get rewarded for wearing certain things over others. And we're going to be some of the first to do that. Uh, and that's what we're really trying to build out with this is, is make, making sure that our, you know, our, the people who are with us, who represent us, they actually get rewarded for doing so. Ah, oh, that's going to be super, super epic. And, uh, one thing I will mention is that Meg, there's something about you that is, is like super close to me. You're afraid of butterflies. I am butterflies and moths. Oh my I'm god! I'm terrified of butterflies. I have the biggest butterfly fear I've ever seen. Like I'm, I feel like we are one. I feel so <laughs> hurt right now. I feel so hurt. This is a, we were just over the weekend uh, at my parents' place because there was my brother got engaged. It was a whole family meeting. Anyways, and I got made fun of a lot based on this this fear of mine. <laughs> And I'm oh, just this, like, you tiny, know this tiny little moth flew near her oh, and she like yeah. jumped up and was karate was chopping it. We were actually in a meeting too, which was hilarious. <laughs> we were in a meeting and I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's me. That's me. I told everyone, like, if anyone wants to actually kill me off, bring me to a butterfly farm. I yeah. will, like, <laughs> I will, I will crouch into a little ball and hyperventilate and literally die. Oh my, my mom goodness. was just like, there's the butterfly oh. conservatory. Like it's in uh, Niagara Falls, which is like a town down. Yeah, it's a, beautiful. It's, it's beautiful, beautiful over there, but yeah. there's a butterfly conservatory. And she's like, oh, we should go face your fears. I'm like, wow. Turn her into Batman. <laughs> That's a death trap. Person. It's like, literally no, a death trap. No, no, no. How dare you? How dare <laughs> hey, you? Oh, my oh. gosh. This is amazing. Yeah, it's so funny. Oh. <laughs> That's the first person who's ever related with her on Honestly. that. So. <laughs> That's so, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Actually, uh, I will. Fun fact: Nicole Kidman. My understanding is that Nicole Kidman is also has a fear of butterflies. So it is the, the three of us. Do you feel validated? I absolutely feel validated. She feels validated. Yes. Thank I, you I'm right there with you, Meg. I really I, needed that. It's the best alpha for that. that. <laughs> It's my only so fear funny. in life. I could, I would rather be in a room full of 10 wasps than one butterfly. No problem. You know, like, right? Same, same. Yeah. No problem. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, Absolutely. You know? Oh you know, and my mom, I keep talking about my mother, but anyways, um, she was just like, you know, the, what is it? The monarch butterflies are going in, e extinct now. I think oh, they're, they're in danger or you're something like that. Coming after you. I, look, I'm not, I'm not that. saying I want Good. it to happen, but I mean, I'm just like, do I, I might want it to happen. <laughs> I'm devastated right now. <laughs> With an endangered so species, horrible. they're beautiful. They're like, I don't trust them. <laughs> There's fine. something it's about fine. them. I don't trust them. They're, they're beautiful wings them. or their harmless nature. Why are they so Which, light? Right. Why are they so they're light? Awful. No, they're, li they're the drunk drivers of the sky. They like 
has no direction. Yeah, it's wow. no. Yeah. Oh my god. Right. I'm I'm with Ty on this. Yeah. <laughs> Jenna, I'm not sure we're going to be friends on this one. That's uh, that's rough. Hi, I, gotta do, I gotta deal with one of them over here. The two of you just like running away from butterflies and stuff. I don't think. Hey, I, don't I don't know how present they are where you are, but I feel like we we get off pretty good here. They're not maybe because they're endangered. I don't know. We're in the middle of the city. <laughs> we live in the middle of the city. Oh, you're good. You're good. Yeah, no, there's quite a few butterflies here. It is terrifying. Oh. Mm -mm. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Mm -mm. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my goodness. Maybe that takes Puerto Rico off the list then. We were planning on that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, it's brutal. You, yeah. It's fearful, very fearful. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's hilarious though. I love it. <laughs> Too funny. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on from butterflies, <laughs> uh, there was a couple of things I wanted to make sure we touched on. One of those was uh, your sustainable sourcing, which I think is, is really, it's just, it's nice to see a company that is thinking about, you know, where they're getting their products from. And mm -hmm. so I, obviously this is, I think more pertaining to, towards the Fame Ladies Collab, but I think maybe other collabs as well. So mm -hmm. can you tell us just a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So we we have always, you know, tried to make a point of sourcing the most like ethical and sustainably sourced products and materials to use with our with our lines. Um, so we're lucky enough to be partnered with a company in Bali, Indonesia, that work with all of our precious metals. Uh, so the Fame Lady Squad collaboration, we worked with 925 Silver and 18 Karat Gold. Um, so they source all the metals on the island. Um, and they actually hire 80% women, which is fantastic because in Indonesia, still kind of part of the culture, women aren't able to um, make an income for themselves. Um, so they basically hire women in like this freelance kind of role. So they're not actually, you know, part of the company, but they're able to earn a living for themselves, which is absolutely incredible. Um, so it's 80% women run and operated, which is amazing. Everything is from the island. And I mean, they pay everybody a living wage. They have been the best people to work with. And you can really tell that they put like love and care into everything they do. Um, all of the Fame Lady pieces were handmade. We had videos they were sending us all the time of the people, you know, creating everything from scratch. It was really, really incredible to see. Um, and then they also, um, they offer a lot of charitable donations based on their products. Uh, so they're partnered with a food bank in Indonesia and a dog rescue as well, which is pretty cool. So we were, yeah, yeah, more than, more than happy to be partnered with them. Um, and we love them. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So I think we have a contest in the store for our listeners. So yeah, uh, Mindy Sell, do you want to share a little bit more about this contest and kind of what the qualifications are? Um, yeah, so, um, so it's, we're going to be giving away one of the NFT NYC pendants mm -hmm. and all you need to do is go join the catharsis uh discord and then what are we going to do ty we're going to have them do a All post caps. in the general chat yeah general chat make sure we know you came from this podcast and it was the nifty chicks who sent you mm -hmm. um, and right. make sure you're following them on twitter as well because mm -hmm. we'll check mm -hmm. uh <laughs> make sure you're following the nifty chicks on twitter that's join right, in that's the discord. Right all caps lock say you know nifty chicks podcast or uh what, what was the tagline again yes so if you join the catharsis uh discord make sure in the generals tab you write uh the nifty chicks invest in yourself you are worth it that is our tagline that is something we believe it's close to home so make sure you write invest in yourself you are worth it that is the sign that you have officially entered the contest to win a NFT NYC pendant necklace. That's right. Well, we'll and do the how long? Yeah, I was gonna say, how long do we want to give them to get entered? Let's say, let's say one week from yeah. the time that the podcast yeah. goes live, mm -hmm. and then uh, give everyone time to. I think that's fair. Yeah. 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 I don't think fine with the hashtag. Exactly. There. Be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, love it. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, obviously, we want to make sure everybody's following you on Twitter. And what is your Twitter? <laughs> if, if that sounds good to you, yeah, it's uh, at, <laughs> at Catharsis NFT on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Easy peasy. And is there anything else that we need to be sure to share with the audience? I mean, yeah, we, we do have uh, all of our collections available on secondary right now. There are two still minting uh, that you can all, you can find all that through our Discord. So just check out the project information okay. or the official links tab. Mm -hmm. um, but to get whitelisted for our duplicates collection, which we aim to release before the end of this year, mm -hmm. uh, you got to own one of our previous collections, uh, just like you guys own the, the Fame Ladies pendants, uh, either own one right. of our Genesis rings or a previous one of our other collections. Uh, those that's the secure 100% way to get whitelisted. Mm -hmm. uh, the other methods would just be Discord participation, but there's a lot less of those. So mm -hmm. uh, right. check them out. If you have any questions, we're always available. Or one of our amazing community mods is there to answer any questions for you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yay. Yay. I'm so glad that we were able to make this happen. It's been great chatting with you guys and learning more about catharsis and what you guys are up to. Thank yeah, you so much for having great. us. This was awesome. Had so much fun. It was yeah. great chatting with both of you. Thank you for having us. Yep. Thanks. And you and you know, you know, you're welcome to come down to Puerto Rico whenever to check things Let's out. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Not Let's near the butterflies. <laughs> but. I, yeah. Well, and maybe you could do it when it's like not so great weather in Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is months. more than half the year. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys. Yeah, such thank a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>